Warning, the following video was rated M for If you're young, you shouldn't watch this, so viewer discretion is advised. But hey, I won't tell if you won't. Y'all remember Brutal Legend? You know, it was that heavy metal extravaganza action title you never played, but you probably have vague memories of because, oh yes, yes, it's all coming back to you. Remember the sound, the look, the feelings, because it's time for... Decapitation! Okay, but seriously, Brutal Legend, a title loved by some, but mostly forgotten to the sands of slightly visible gems. Because let's be honest, this title was kind of hard to wipe from your mind unless you like getting behind the corners with the scrubbers, because Brutal Legend had the almighty money power girth of EA backing it up, promoting it to every man, woman, and hardcore baby who could hold a controller, along with it just being a unique looking game in general, cause you got stuff like this, and this, and this! But of course, if you've never heard of this game before, let's drag out the world's most famous underground developers, Double Fine, aka Mr. Sh face of the machines back into the limelight. So throw back to 2005, Psychonauts hits the scene, no one cares, and Tim Schafer finally puts into development his passion project he has had on the back burner for years. That's right, y'all. Tenacious D and the pick a I mean brutal legend. An absolute love letter to all things metal, from the album art, the aesthetics, the artists, the music, the brutality, if you wanted that is. It was just a pure poster child of rock. Following the story of Eddie Riggs, who is the world's best roadie, the dude has a little stage accident one day while overseeing a show, and through the power of symbolic stage equipment is transported to the world of heavy metal, where music sets things on fire, the only food is protein powder, and no one owns a shirt. So being a buff fish out of water, Eddie befriends a small resistance group led by a chiseled man named Lars, who wants to take the land back from a flying screaming 80s man and a dark demon emperor named Daviculus, who can totally see in that thing, I promise. So with his pro roadie giga brain, Eddie taps into the knowledge of the old titans and uses his skills to help advance the resistance in their fight for freedom with the power of rock and good old fashioned presentation. On top of that, there's some world history, a love subplot, twists and turns, evil poop water, demons being petty, and a backstory for the most cool, charismatic Mary Sue I have ever seen. All tied together with Double Fine's trademark comedic undertones. How about you take off your diaper, lay down your little baby foo foo, and go do your job right now? Yee! But even without the story, Brutal Legend was the full package. Double Fine was known for making smaller indie game titles, but wanted this game to be different and their biggest yet. So they buckled down and brought out the big boy guns, creating a metal as heck open world with hot rods, action, demons, guitars, and as much star power as they could pack in. Getting people like David Cross, Kyle Gass, Tim Curry, Lemmy Killmeister, Ozzy Osbourne, and the most legendary face of rock who carried this whole game with his massive weird hands. That's right y'all, my husband, Jack Black. Yeah, this game had everything, guys. So with a killer cast, creative concept, competent developers with passion, and a publisher with a gun at everybody's head, no one really cares about this game anymore, or even talks about it, like, at all. I don't know, except for, like, you hardcore metal fans out there. Gang, gang, y'all, what's up? But it came out, was cool for about five minutes, and then poof! Apathy. Now, I do have some reasons as to why this may be, but honestly, aesthetically, everything about Brutal Legends screams classic. And normally, Double Fine titles don't do so hot out the gate, but over time become successful out of cult appeal. But Brutal Legend, despite being the biggest and most AAA title the developers had ever made, didn't do that. It was a flash of the pan success, because it did sell well for a Double Fine game, but not an EA game, if that makes sense. After the hype of its initial release, it was just whispers of interest, and then Tim Schafer discovered Kickstarter, and then everyone really forgot about it. So what happened? Because this game is recognizable. People definitely know about it. I mean, it came out during the Guitar Hero craze. Who didn't want to be a heavy metal rock star blowing things up with their sick shreds? Well, you see, Brutal Legend almost did everything right. There is no denying it's iconic just off of its concept alone, with its open world, artistic direction, fun, simple story, great cast, and amazing soundtrack. Everything about it was just talented, brilliant, Brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. But 
It's core gameplays where things get a little messy. You see, Brutal Legend is a bizarre mix of hack and slash action with guitar powers and real-time strategy, aka RTS mechanics, where you put on a show, command large groups of dudes and resources to attack other groups of dudes so you can take over certain markers on the maps on a big battlefield. To be fair, both forms of gameplay are functional, but lack any real depth on their own, and it doesn't really help that you're doing them at the same time. Now, this wouldn't be much of an issue, except for the fact that, like, 80% of the story missions are these big RTS battles where you're flying around whacking people, commanding groups of dudes to do all the work for you, and in the process getting lost in all the mess of the metalheads and biker babes, and I don't know what's going on anymore. I think I'm helping. Hello? Long story short, Brutal Legend has a gameplay identity crisis, trying to be two genres at once and not really excelling in either. You can't take two basic saltine crackers, put them on top of each other, and call it a sandwich, you feel? Because I'm a big girl, I gotta eat. I'm hungry for God's sake. Gosh! So lunch already? Now, most people can agree that even though the RTS battles aren't terrible and would have been fine in moderation, the game would have been better suited as just a hack and slash action experience for the majority of the missions. Because the first hour of the game and a handful of quests are just that, and it's great. There's no flocks of dudes, no towers to take down, no nothing. It's just Eddie swinging his axe, lightning chaining dudes to death, chopping off heads, and driving his car, causing mass destruction. <laughs> <coughs> much better. Basically, it's stuff you would want from a game like this, but the deeper you get into things, the more it's set to tutorialize all the RTS stuff, and you're like, oh... Oh, it's not letting up, is it? There was also multiplayer, which had you battling out someone else's army with all the micromanaging and dudes everywhere. And just, uh, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it other than like, you know, I'm good. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm fine. Of course, the marketing sure as hell didn't help people digest the RTS mechanics either, since folks kind of felt tricked, because all of the promotional material really made the game seem like it was an action open world game with maybe some crowd commanding thrown in for a variety. But oh man, someone had double was willing to die on that RTS hill, let me tell ya. Just kidding, I know exactly who it was. It was Tim Schafer. The man took out a mortgage, raised the family, and proudly died in his rocking chair on that RTS hill. Overall, though, it didn't make the gameplay awful, and it was definitely unique, but it's not what people were expecting, and I can't say for sure that's exactly what hurt the game's longevity over time, but I can say it affected my interest, that's for sure. You see, I had a weird obsession with this game when it came out, since it looked like the total bee's knees, and my emo teenage brain made me look at it with Goo Goo Eyes. I watched the trailers religiously. I was glued to what little Let's Plays existed of it at the time, and I was so dang thirsty to get my hands on the Jack Black hot and heavy experience. But I didn't get a PlayStation 3 until 2012, and when I finally did, I got Brutal Legend ready to have my mind blown, and I found myself getting bored with the core combat about two hours in. And trust me, I tried to love it. I really did, but oh, this is... This is fine, I guess. <sighs> but it was just the tiny things that kept this game from being a true mascot of the generation. From a lack of a mini-map, not being able to tell allies from enemies half of the time, uninspired side missions, and Eddie not being able to jump at all for some reason, despite the fact the dude can straight up fly in stage battles, what's up with that? I'm just guessing that all of the baby flaws accumulated and kept this game slightly under the line of things people should care about today. That's kind of Double Fine's curse in a nutshell, but that's not to say Brutal Legend is dead in the water and is doomed to be forgotten as time goes on. Oh, no, 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 no. Tim Schafer has said he is set on creating a sequel after Psychonauts 2, something I am very excited for. Because despite my lack of interest in the core combat, I truly love this game for everything it did right. And I do recommend it if you want something different with a classic feel and if you love yourself some metal. It's good, it's vibrant, and it makes me want to fight the system, man! So if Double Fine can focus on the stuff that made the original fun and build on that for the sequel, then I will happily let Brutal Legend 2 singe off my eyebrows and melt my teeth, climbing to the highest mountain screaming, It's about f time! Since you don't see passion projects like this that often, and I want this heavy metal world to get a second chance so it can be admired by a new audience, and to drag Jack Black out back where he belongs, and our head banging pitch black hearts. Gosh, the 2000s were wild. So, it's just a shame some people forgot about Brutal Legend, because certain things were meant to be legendary. <laughs> 
Yo, yo, you giddy -el. welcome to the end of the video. I want to give a lovely thank you to the awesome people that sent me some goodies in my P.O. box over the last few weeks. I've gotten some crazy nice things uh, from a Keyblade to a bunch of shirts, games, collectibles, posters, comics, notes, all these lovely things that people have sent to me in my P.O. box. I greatly appreciate it. So if you did send me something, bless you so much. If you want to send me something, my P.O. box is down below. I give a shout out on both Twitter and at the end of videos or most of my videos. So yeah, if you're considering sending me something, doesn't matter what it is, go for it, all right? My P.O. box is available, do whatever. I greatly appreciate it, no matter what it is. And yeah, we are here at the end of the video. Real talk, I have been meaning to talk about Brutal Legend for a long time now, but my backlog is huge, like actively huge, like it stresses me out, but it's whatever, it's whatever. Uh, follow me on social media. I have a Twitter where you can like see my opinions on things and you know, updates on videos and all that good crap. And then my Twitch, so you can see live gameplay and talk to me and stuff I, I recommend following me on twitch and then if you feel like supporting my channel go ahead and check out patreon where you can get some cool perks and stuff and also you know keep me alive that's always fun uh but that's it yeah um what's your favorite jack black movie I i'd love to know i'm very curious okay because like everyone's got one right okay <laughs> just light it up guys uh bye bye